to that stuff in my Cargo's channel. In today's video I'm going to explain how the MAP sensor works. The MAP sensor stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. This sensor was first introduced by Bosch in 1967 on its electronically controlled gasoline injection systems. Ever since then, the MAP sensor has been used by different car makers on different vehicles. So once the electronic fuel injection system became the norm in the United States in the mid 80s, it is very common to find a MAP sensor in the majority of vehicles unless they are equipped with a vein airflow meter or a mass airflow sensor that even though the purpose of the three is similar the way they work is very different so today we're going to focus on the MAP sensor and once you understand how it works it's going to be a lot easier to troubleshoot any symptoms that might be related to a MAP sensor the MAP sensor is used by the computer to determine the engine load and how it's done the MAP sensor is going to read how much vacuum is in the intake manifold. The computer will use this information along with the TPS and all the other ones to inject the correct amount of fuel and have the correct fuel mixture under any RPMs or engine load conditions whether it's idle, part throttle, full throttle. So at idle there's going to be a high vacuum which is going to be read by the MAP sensor and a full throttle there's going to be nearly none. And this is a normally aspirated LT1 so the MAP sensor is going to read either the vacuum or the absence of vacuum. So inside the MAP sensor there are two diaphragms that expand and contract in accordance with the changing pressure. The inside of one cell inside the MAP sensor is vented to the atmosphere and the space surrounding both cells is vented to intake manifold pressure. When the manifold pressure goes up, the cells inside the sensor compress, pulling an iron core armature into a coil which in turn changes the signal that goes back to the computer. So what I'm going to do now using a vacuum pump and a handheld scanner I'm going to illustrate how this signal changes The MAP sensor on the LT1 engine is located right here. Very accessible, very easy to find, which, and it looks exactly like this. This is the underside. This is the part that is connected to the manifold vacuum. This is the electrical connection, obviously. And this is what you see from the top. Just like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the scanner to the OVD port of the vehicle. So I have the scanner connected to the OVD port. I have the key on and with the engine off the scanner is reading 4.05 volts. So if I start the engine
it won't be necessary to disconnect the plug because I'm going to be reading the signal with the scanner so it needs to be connected otherwise I won't be able to read it <clears throat> just like that it has the seal right there so the vacuum signal stays tight and accurate so first step is to remove the seal so I can connect the vacuum pump to it so the key is on and the signal right now is 4.11 volts so what I'm going to do and then remember the sensor is connected so I'm going to go ahead and apply vacuum just like if uh, the engine was being started I have no vacuum right now so if I start applying vacuum see how the signal changes and if I go higher see how the signal changes as the vacuum increases the voltage drops indicating that the vehicle has high vacuum which as you were able to see higher vacuum is when the car is at idle and the reason why is because the butterfly on the throttle plate is actually restricting some of the barometric pressure that exists in the atmosphere as the pistons start going up and down that empty space wants to get filled with air but like I said as the butterfly restricts the entrance of air you know this would exemplify full throttle no restriction so that means at that point the butterfly is not restricting anything so the vacuum signal is going to change indicating that the vehicle is under full acceleration so that's how you can test your sensor if you think that you have a malfunction in sensor you can connect your scanner and apply vacuum slowly and you should see the signal change gradually it shouldn't change suddenly or it shouldn't have spikes of signal drastically going up or down it should be a steady increase or decrease as you change the vacuum signal I'm gonna remove that so let's say you don't have a handheld scanner um, even if you don't have a vacuum pump a vacuum pump can usually be part of a loaner tool program and measure auto parts stores so you can get access to a vacuum pump even if you cannot get a handheld scanner like this and I'm gonna show you how you can test the sensor with a voltmeter in case you don't have one of these okay so the key still on 4.09 volts on the scanner the voltmeter is reading zero because it's not touch a signal wire yet but remember insert paper clips through here so you don't damage the insulation I already said this must have been tested before because I see this little pinhole that I'm gonna use right there so signal slightly different 409, 413 not a huge variation not enough to give us a completely inaccurate reading that we couldn't use so I'm gonna go ahead and apply the vacuum with the pump so you can see the changes see that so both of them the signal changes on both the voltmeter and the scanner so that's how you can test your map sensor with a voltmeter in case you don't have a scanner Remove, this, remove the vacuum and the signal changes back so there you go now you know how to test your map sense using either a scanner or a voltmeter and a handheld vacuum pump you also learn about its operation so this should make it very easy to diagnose a problem with the map sensor thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time